Uh, wait a minute. Hold up. Stop everything. Hold on. We we have we having a moment up in here right now. We got one of the coldest niggas to ever come up out of the South. Facts. One oh. fourth of come the on. most legendary hip hop groups of our generation. Facts. Come on. Come on, man. I'm what? talking about. The nigga who was telling us that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you yeah, better wow. watch what I'm saying. Look, yeah. this is the nigga, act act. Yeah. This the the nigga who told me. Watch out. I need a project, bitch. Yeah. What? A hood rat, bitch. One that don't give a fuck, fuck and say bitch. she took that. <laughs> <laughs> that alone is enough poetry to let you know that we yeah. got Turk in this motherfucker. Come on, we talking about man. balling since his younger days. Been pulling triggers, been running through the hallway, playing it raw, sparking at any time, anywhere, any place with my fucking eye. I like them hot. The ones that don't tell me to stop. Eat dick, swallow the cup. And they know how to pop. Oh my God, bro. You, you, come on, man. Wait a minute, bro. Come on. It's in me, man. All that untamed gorilla, man, you know. All that shit, man. You don't man. understand, nigga. It's like we grew up together. Oh, we watched man. you go from Lil Turk yeah, to man. Turk. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Yeah. It was Lil Turk at first. Facts. Yeah. Then the nigga got grown and dropped. He wasn't never rapping Lil, though. Yeah. No, never. Yeah. He was rapping. Yeah, man, you know. Wrong. I've been off the porch, man, you know. Untamed um, Gorilla. I ain't had no childhood, you feel me? My childhood was stolen from me, bro, like at 14. I was the man of the house, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, shit, you got to man up, you know what I'm saying? My daddy wasn't in the house, mama was at work. So you know me, man, I'm lurking, you feel me? My old goal was to get my mom out of the project, you know what I'm talking about? So that was my motivation, dog. you know what I'm saying? I hustled a little bit, that ain't work out, you know what I'm saying? God bless, you feel me, with yeah. the music. I'm glad it happened that way, but you know, Shit still was gangster, you heard me? Yeah. 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 Bro, you knew you was cold at, at music, like whatever. To be honest, bro, I promise you, like, with the music shit, man, it was just like, I used to be jealous of a little, um, not a bad creation, the ABC dude, uh, Immature and all them. So I used to be like, man, fuck them niggas, man. I, I'm, I'm trying to get the <laughs> bitches like, you know what I'm saying, like them, because I already was wearing the S curl and shit back in the days and all the old <laughs> girls, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They used to like me and shit, so, you know, I had the baby bands and all that shit, <laughs> slicking my hair down with the cut in the eyebrows and shit, you know, but that uh, wasn't enough, you know what I'm saying? So my whole motivation really was the females and I wanted to get my mom out the hood, yeah, you right, know, um, right. at the time, Magnolia Shorty, you know, she was a um, female artist with Cash money, and she had a record called Monkey on the Dick at the time. Mm -hmm. And me and her was cool, like she stayed across the courtway from me in the Magnolia. And um, I mean, I used to be rapping at DJs and shit, man. And I told her to put in the word for me, you know what I'm saying? She did that. Baby man, Slim Man and Fresh came DJ in the Magnolia one day, where I'm from. In and, the hood. Um, in the hood, yeah. And um, I rapped the Slim. Magnolia started like, oh, this the nigga I was telling you about, bam, bam, bam. You know, Opportunity was there. I rapped. And I wasn't no cold rapper, dog. I just had the determination, hustle, like the drive, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never felt like nobody could stop me from doing nothing. I always had that leadership, you know, them attributes, you feel me? And uh, when I rapped to him, he was like, shit, he gave me a card, told me to come to the studio. I used to play football. I used to go to the studio with my tugs on at the football practice. I was dedicated, you know what I'm saying? I think that's what put me in a position to be able to become a hot boy. It was just by coincidence, bro. I, I, right place, right time. Wayne, BG, Juvenile, they was really rappers. They was really, you know, they was born gifted with that yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? I just inherited, and, you know, me and Wayne used to rap every day. He used to make me write. You know what I'm saying? He was younger than me, but he was, like, like far as, like, mentally with the rap shit, he was always, you know, dedicated, book, book pad, you know what I'm saying? Like, bam, bam, bam. Let me ask you this. Yeah. What was it like watching, you know, your, your little brother become superhuman? You know, I was started. in prison, man, yeah. when it happened, you know. Um, I always knew Wayne was going to be big. Like, that was, I always knew that, you know what I'm saying? Because he was dedicated. I mean, we was in Foot Locker, man. There's a picture out here floating somewhere. And um, I was trying on my Reeboks, you heard me. This nigga had a pad in his hand, foot like, like, 
Like, he was just so dedicated. Wherever he went, he took that pad with him. That when he was writing and shit. But he used to write every day. This nigga had rap. Remember, we had beepers and shit, right? This nigga had a rap on his beeper. He used to rap. Like, on the two-way Like, you call shit. it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, not the two-way nigga, the beeper. You feel me? The regular beeper. <coughs> pager, you feel me? And he rapping on that motherfucker, man, and... How he used to orchestrate it and put it together like niggas used to want him to do they beepers. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, this little nigga creative. He talented. You know, and he was dedicated and he wasn't on drugs. He wasn't doing no drugs. You feel me? He was just focused. You know what I'm saying? He used to get mad at me. I used to be doing so much drugs and shit. He used to be mad. And um, I just knew he was going to be big, man. Like, I never doubted it. It wasn't no surprise, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He always looked up to, like, Jay-Z. The world just got to see that, but I knew he'd been wearing the Timberlands when we was wearing Reeboks. He wearing the book bag, you know what I'm saying? And Baby used to get mad. Man, this nigga with this East Coast-ass shit, you know what I'm saying? But he been idolizing Jay-Z since, like, yay high, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. why when he rapped, it's, it always was different from ours, you know what I'm saying? And, um... Shit, he, he just lived out his dream, bro, you know what I'm saying? And he one of the biggest, you feel me? Yeah, man, but you feel like you to be right in the middle of one of the biggest movements to come out of the South, you feel me? Like, that shit had to be crazy, bro. Man. Cause it's th that, that'll yeah. never be done again, bro. The run that y'all had. Facts. Right behind, Facts. like, one of the biggest runs ever. Man. Big. And man, came and fucked the game up. You always seemed like the perfect team player, though. You feel what I, I'm saying? I was, but like, see, back then I was kind of like, <clears throat> I was quiet. You know what I'm saying? Observing. You know what I'm saying? Watching everything. But was a devil. You feel me? Like, I was the, I was a quiet assassin, like type. You know, people thought I was the good dude, but I really wasn't. As far as like street shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, getting in the industry and talking. You know, yeah, I was shy of that because that's something different. But in the streets, I was really like that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, of course, you know, I kept my street shit away from the business, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was just, man, it was just, man, like like a dream come true. I didn't realize how big we was until when I was in prison. And I was in the feds, you know what I'm saying? And um, people just been asking me about when y'all going to do a hot boy reunion? When y'all, man, I... Bro, I'm trying to get out of prison. Why the fuck is y'all keep asking me about the hot boy reunion? I'm talking about, you know, I did eight years, eight months, 16 days, bro, and they asked me this damn near every day. Yeah. Like, for eight years, eight months, 16 days, they asked me that shit, bro. So I'm like, damn. And I went on the yard one time, man, and I was like, I performed. It was on the, um, Juneteenth, you know, yeah. the little um, Cinco de Mayo, I believe. And, um... I performed and I was like, damn, man, this shit really, you know, it dawned on me after all them years that, man, I'm right, really a superstar. That's that's when I felt it. Like, yeah. But I never, because I still was running through the hoods, shooting heroin, cocaine, getting high, you feel me? Like, I was doing everything that a, a, a regular person do in the hood, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't never said, I was on tour, but it never dawned on me that I was a superstar, dog. Like, uh, I was a part of Stardom, you know what I'm saying? It never yeah. dawned on us, bro, because we always, you know, just kept that humble spirit, you know what I'm saying? But we had signed a $30 million deal. Juvenile had them went, what, about five time platinum, you know, I'm all on his album. Hot Boys, double platinum, triple platinum. Yeah. So, I, but man, we never got plaques or none of that shit. So I'm like, I never see it, saw it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Until, you know, <clears throat> years and years as I got older and I'm like, man, this shit was for real. Yeah. But if you not really, like, paying attention, bro, like how I be saying right now, man, these little niggas don't know what they got. How they, they, but I have to think, I was doing the same shit. It yeah. just wasn't getting recorded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't know it just like I didn't know. They really don't know. Like, people like regular civilians would be like, man, these niggas only knew. Why they wait till they get big to start doing all this dumb shit? That's because they have been doing dumb shit. It's just on a bigger scale. Right. You see what I'm saying? So More everybody people watching them, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? So I understand them, bro. Like, it, it be hard, bro. Like, especially when you just got grabbed and 
and it happening fast. Now you don't have to really just do too much. You know what I'm saying? You can wake up yeah, and your shit and blow up overnight. Up overnight. Yeah. It, it, it is what it is. So that shit happening fast. So I overstand the young niggas. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with them. You know, I just wish they can see before it's too late, dog. Because now they getting real motherfucking alphabet numbers. You know what I'm saying? They ain't Hell playing yeah. with them. You know, they taking their money, ain't giving them time. You know what I'm saying? They making a lot of money now. <laughs> you feel me? So it, the stakes is way money. higher. Yeah, it's, they got a lot more to lose. I hope they see it before it's too late, you know. Man, you, hey, that's a slippery slope right there. I mean, you can't, you know, some of them lessons, like you said, sometimes you try to give, you know, the younger generation the best advice, but some of them lessons ain't going to be learned until they, they hit their go, head. They go you got to go through it, man. They're going to have to go through it just like we went through it, just like I went through it. I went to jail when I was 22. You know, um, I had a shootout with the police. Yeah. You know, um, I was fucking with heroin and cocaine, you know. They doing what perks and, and and drink and shit now. You know it's the same thing. Michael Jackson, Jackson Michael is the same thing. They just doing it in a different form. You know, yeah. it's like CDs, MP3s. You know that shit switched up with this music. You know what I'm saying? The same thing. You got the same slur, the same duck. You know what I'm saying? You have the same high, same effect. Stomach hurt, nuts hurt. Feel like you got three flus if you don't have it. You know what I'm saying? The same thing. But um, it's just crazy, bro. How 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 um. When, when people is in their life, the drugs come with it. And it's like, it's a fashion statement. It ain't, I'm not no dope thing. Like, I ain't never felt like I was a dope thing. You know mm. what I'm saying? It been times where they just threw drugs and dope on the stage. We on a Cash Money Rough Rider tour. You know, throw it on the stage and pick it up and bam, they knew what it was. You know, every city we went to, we gone in the hood. Martin Luther King, where the Martin Luther King Street? We know it's a hood on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had a routine. Just kept that mentality that everywhere we was going, they got street niggas worldwide, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. we just was living and, you know, never saw it that we was big, bro. Like, you them niggas don't see it. I know they don't see it. You know, and they won't see it until they bang. And it's too late. It's sad to say, hope they'll see this and, you know, take it from me, man. You know what I'm saying? One of the biggest groups in the world. Y'all don't really see, and they still mimic the hot boys, you know what I'm saying? Right. They might not say it, but everybody got a little, uh, uh, every city, out Florida, Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? New York, down south, up north, New I mean, um, West Coast, everywhere, you feel right. me? Yeah. But, but um, see, y'all had, that's what I'm saying, y'all had that appeal where it's like, man, man, once that shit down, broke, man. it was in every hood. Yeah, though. everywhere. Yo. Yo, this shit is like everywhere. a soundtrack. It was ever to, to, a whole, summer, to a whole to generation. A whole year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> facts, facts. Then you know, you got, you got, you got, you got different. All day and all you got, you got yeah. four different young niggas. Juve being the oldest, BG second, B then Wayne. Right. So that's four different personalities. Then we was grounded by by Birdman. Like he gave us the game. Right. But you know what I'm saying? We went in that motherfucker. He gave us structure, but we went in there and did what we did, what we seen, what we were living. You know what I'm saying? And that shit just worked out. Then you got Man and Fresh. And what people don't know, Slim is really the brains. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Slim, he don't say nothing. You don't never see him. But right. he the motherfucker that calling all the shots. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing happening without Slim. You feel me? But, you know, Birdman is the face. But Slim is the brains. And we was just the tools being used, and you know what I'm saying? It all made sense, bro. Everybody played their role, played their part. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that we do a hot boy reunion, you Come know? On. Yeah, um, me, Egos, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't 99, 2000 no more. Of course, we had our falling out and all this shit, you know, media here, media there, and motherfucker create headlines, Turk say this, Juve say this, B -G. at the end of the day, we family. I right. got them nigga name tattooed in my chest. You know what I'm saying? Baby Slim, Hot Boy came on, all that shit all over me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really got love for them niggas. You know what I'm saying? And um, if, it, if it's God's will, law of attraction gonna bring us back. You feel right. me? And we gonna do that. Yeah, it's you know? gotta happen, man. That yeah. shit was so big. Some yeah. monumental mm -hmm. shit, bro. We gotta see it. I feel when 2000 come in, it'll be all about, man, that shit is <laughs> yeah. crazy, man. Hey, he spoke that shit in existence. Man. Real you know shit, bro. It was, it was, just like he said it. Man, I remember me and Wayne, this one, Juvenile was getting the Rolls Royces and Bentleys and, 
And me and Wayne was getting little pet finders and Camaros, and we were like, man, fuck this shit. So me and him, you know, me and him, like, you know, we like, man, fuck it, man, because P was buying his artists, like, he was giving them niggas Rolexes, he was putting them niggas in houses, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He, well, he had a, he had a uh, rapper starter pack, that's what I'm going to call it. He, he gave them niggas houses. a nice houses. little pack, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, houses, yeah. Rolex, and a fucking car. For young nigga, we like, shit, we don't got that nigga, we in the hotel right now, you feel me? Right. Cause me and Wayne used to fuck bitches in the hotel, the uh, Sean is in and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, keeping they panties, nigga, well, I bet you I have more bitches than you at the end of the week. We keeping they panties, see how many female we fucking at the end of the week and shit, you know what I'm saying? But like, we was, used to be thinking like, man, look, if we go to P, none of them niggas could rap, Wayne. They just got really mystical and fiending me ahead. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's how we think, and they got mad. Everybody else is whack. You know what I'm saying? Bro, man, you, we go in there and take over. Like, we thinking like that, but you know what I'm saying? We ain't never just went on, but that's when then we started getting broke off. But Juvenile at first, man, he used to walk in the mall and shit, bro. And we walk in the mall with that nigga, man. He was the star. That shit used to drop, baby. Baby, be like, man, nigga, this nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? But he had never probably admit that shit. But Juvenile was the biggest at one time. Yeah. All how the shit. Um, unfolded, but really, to be honest, and then this t- this story never told. BG really, man, was the one who got that deal. Juvenile just happened to be clear-minded. BG at the time was going through, you know, his demons and shit, so it was a liability. Yeah. For the business, Juvenile happened to have an album deal. You know what I'm saying? Bam, bam, bam. But BG put the numbers up for them to get the attention on. It wasn't Juve. And I don't think BG get enough credit, you feel yeah. me? Nobody talk about it, you know what I'm saying? But BG was the one who held cash money down after, you know, everything before BG you know, and yeah. us, you know what I'm saying? And um, Juvenile just came with the album at the time and bam, 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 it, it took off. Cause I remember we went to the tunnel, right? And the first time we went, he performed the, the hunt. Man, them niggas looking at us like ready to throw bananas and tomatoes at us, you heard me? This is so, the tunnel, uh, New York? The tunnel, yeah, they were looking like so I'm like, damn. But everywhere else, you know, down south, they were like fucking with it. So we were like, damn, them niggas ain't fucking with us in New York. New York, a hard crowd. Yeah. You On know, anything. He did the remix with um, Jay Z. We went back. Everybody fucking with us, dog. It was like, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy, dog. I remember um, the nigga Puffy in 112. We all went in there with him. And a the nigga um, Puffy was drinking Cristal way back in the days, you heard me? And the nigga gave me some of the Cristal out of the bottle. I was happy to be drinking that bottle after that nigga. Yeah, <laughs> nigga a bottle. Yeah, you feel me? So it was like, you know, damn, we made it, man. pre, pre, pre you know? before. But I was happy, though. Shit. I was happy because I was a fan of, you know, Big and Puffy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he was a fan of us, but he ain't know. And he gave me that Cristal bottle. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I want to keep that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> For real, like, you know, niggas don't be keeping it real, but I'm going to keep it real. Like, yeah. I was a fan of the nigga, man, you know? It's dope to have moments like that, man, when yeah. you see motherfuckers and they fuck with you the same way you fuck with them. Facts. Yeah. They let you know you on the right shit. Yeah. Facts. Right path. You like, I fuck with, okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. That nigga was a fan of that nigga. Look, that's all he talk about, hot boy. Puffy stunning on us one time. We was at Justin. Out here in Atlanta, he had a club called He stunned Justin. on y'all, yeah. man. Man, look, all of us had Rolexes, right? So, you know, Baby had two of them. You know what I'm saying? He bam, bam, bam. Puffy like, man, look, hold up. I got one watch on, nigga. And the motherfucker had one diamond in the ear. Cost more than all six of y'all watches put together. It was a Frank Moolah back in the day, you know what I'm saying? The motherfucker was a million dollar watch. You know, my Rolex was like 25, 30,000. He fucked us all, dog. Baby say, man, listen, no nigga never outstunt me. From that day forward. That's where that shit came from. <laughs> That's where this shit that shit came from. <laughs> that way, came from. Bruh, bro. I promise to God. You just broke. You just broke the motherfucker sound wave with that one, bro. That's, that's, and that shit makes so much sense. That nigga it? Puffy stunning on baby. The way he stunning on us, baby. Man, fuck that, man. Listen, ain't no, ain't no other nigga gonna ever outstunt me. 
That nigga went stunt crazy, man. So that so, nigga bought 50 cars. I'm talking about literally. So like, that's when he became the number one stunt. That's when he, he became the number one stunt. It was, bro, we was at just it's the club. I, it's, if y'all remember, it was a club yeah. called Justin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The puff it shit. was bust around. They got picture flow, bust around. Puff, man, you pull up on a puppy, stun it on the. Bro, who was that? New face white. gonna find New the picture. Find it's, a, it's, a, it's a picture with me, uh, all of us, Buster Rhyme on there. I don't think Puffy got in the pitch. You know what I'm saying? He was stunting on us. You right, know? right, right. Because them niggas in New York were like, y'all need a country. That's how they looked at us, for yeah, real. Yeah, they did that. I'm going to be real. Like, Pete and them came in the Versace suits and... That shit was country, them shoes and all that. We at the at the awards with t-shirts and bows and you know, we were thugging. Yeah. You know soldier, what I'm soldier, yeah, yeah, so you know that was like hood niggas, you know what I'm saying? We really put the side on the map. I don't give a fuck. I fuck with Pete. Oh, I did a song with him and everything, no disrespect. But Pete and them represent the South Country. Like they, they, they that ain't what we do. You know what I'm saying, nigga? We coming, we thugging, you know, Jabot t-shirt, bandanas, you know what I'm saying? We, you know, like on the block, standing by the payphone. That's how we came, you yeah. feel me? So bam, man, that nigga, that nigga stunted on us, bro. And baby said, man, listen, after this, no nigga never outstunt me. He came the number one stunner, bro. And nigga can't outstunt me when it comes to these motherfucking bro. Man, hold on, nigga, that's hip hop history, right there. That's hip hop history. That's crazy. That's fucking wow. That that's that's puffy. Cause that nigga used to, we used to go like, and after the club, we went to Puffy um, Presidential Suite. I remember, the nigga Puffy come out with a robe. He was stunting on us the whole fucking night. He, got, a, so, he got the robe on with the slippers and shit like in the suite. That was my first time seeing a suite cause we had double beds and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, damn, this nigga was <laughs> presidential suite. This was back then. You know what I'm saying? So that was big. Just think that's back. They got the, I'm like, damn, they got all this shit going on. He come out with the robe and shit with the slipper. I'm like, I'm a groupie here, man. Right, <laughs> you feel me? I'm like, damn, these niggas stunt. Because Baby used to stunt, but Puffy was stunt team. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Like, like, nigga, you ain't talking about shit right I now. I got four bids, bitch. Me? Listen, like, this nigga, you stunting and saying it, but this nigga stunting and showing it. It's yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, it just was. After that, man, and then created a monster, man. And Bird just went platinum grill with the, I, like, he just went crazy. That nigga had 50 cars. I'm talking about literally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> literally. I, like, Young Buck just did an interview and he was saying something about, you know, um, they them cars wasn't for Bird, man, and this, this, and that. And I want to clear that up. You know what I'm saying? We fuck with some niggas out of Nashville, you know what I'm saying? Street niggas or whatever, whatever, you know? And we baby fuck with them, you know what I'm saying? And they them niggas had money. That's how we found out about we was calling diamonds boogers. Cause them young niggas had Rolex and they used to call their diamonds the baguettes boogers. You know what I'm saying? Big ass diamonds. And baby got cool with them. Twine flying to Nashville, me and Twine spitting A day, all that shit there on the big time of album. He was talking about Lil Jimmy. And um Young Buck went on another show, I'm not gonna say the name, and he was saying something about, man, all them cars was ours, and this and this and that. First of all, they was little Jimmy's. They wasn't theirs, you know what I'm saying? Jimmy and the rest of them. Buck was like, he was young, you feel me? And um, Baby had a Hummer, Jimmy and them had a Hummer. Baby had a Jag, Jimmy and them had a, it was like a match for match, you feel me? And I don't want niggas to just, Cause even though like we ain't like this, this, bro, I don't like niggas to just be saying shit about niggas and get the wrong perception. You know what I'm saying? Nah, shit, I don't bro. like them niggas like don't do that, bro. Like we all family, you know what I'm saying? That's why this conflict shit keep going on, cause niggas are getting these blogs and go to, you know what I'm saying, bam, bam, bam. Nah, man, keep it 1,000. Like, don't shit on each other, you feel me? Yeah. At all, at one time we all had to fake it till we make it. Yes, we did. Fake it till we make it. Who ain't do that? Everybody did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. don't try to shit on them. Yeah, that's like, how you make it. You know, that's how you make it. You got to fake it. You got to fake it. No making it without faking it. You got to fake it. How you going to start off with every goddamn thing? Ain't no nigga right. starting off with right. it. I don't give a fuck. They not going to admit it. I'm not going to support you if you already got it. I'm going to try to get a billion to tell y'all what you really want. Right, right. You need my support for you got every goddamn thing. 
Yeah, man, that's just, that's just how it go. You know Bad shit with my money. I, like, like us, 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 bro, we got to stop doing that with each other, like dividing yeah. the conquer, like falling into these traps, man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and want to see everybody together, do man. good, let's, man. Like, let's yeah, win. Yeah. We all faked it. Everybody had to make believe. Got to. Law of attraction, nigga, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get everything good, what you focus on, and that's what wind up happening. Yeah. You know, so um, I wanted to clear that up, man, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to whole t Nashville, Tennessee, because they did inspire even Pimp and Ken. Like, I remember Baby sitting down talking to Pimp and Ken, getting game from him, you know what I'm saying? Right. But that nigga is the number one stunt. I never seen nobody do it like that nigga. Do it like Slim, you know what I'm saying? Like, that nigga, he, he is that, bro. Like, <laughs> he is that, you know what I'm saying? Right. He didn't calm down now, but... You know, that's still my dog, bro. Even though we went through what we went through, you feel me? It ain't no 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 love loss or none of that, you know what I'm saying? Um the media get it twisted, start, you know, clickbaiting and all that Doing shit. Doing they shit in there. You know what I'm saying? Doing mm -hmm. what they do, but it ain't like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I came home, man, uh, Wayne gave me about four songs since I've been home. Right. Birdman did a song for me, you know what I'm saying? Juvenile. Like we all mm -hmm. cool, bro. We just you grow apart just because you don't see. We grown. I'm 40 years old. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But I hold it right there. I'm 40 years old. We all grown now. So they expect. The internet got it to where they think. Um, people think, oh, they supposed to be together. But that ain't how real life is. You feel me? Niggas grow apart, man. Niggas got families. Niggas got these business and that, that, that. You know what I'm saying? So. Me, Priorities done changed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it didn't change, you know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> we see each other. It's all love, man. Ain't, yeah. We ain't going to kill each other. You feel me? Yeah. So, you know, like I think, you know, niggas got to stop letting these this, this social media, man, trick them out of position, man, and, and really, like, start, you know, manning up on some grown-up shit. You feel yeah. me? Bro, yeah. we got to talk about this, man. One of the most legendary hood movies of all time, bro. Baller block. Oh, yeah. Baller block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I showed my ass off in that, man. I came out my shell. And my parts really was BG part. You know what I'm saying? But BG, like I say, that's my nigga, man. I can't wait till he come home. Um, he be home any minute. Free BG. Yeah, free. BG free. I don't BG say free BG. Free, BG go. free. And BG we gonna, free. We gonna address BG that, too, free. when I say that. So y'all can yeah. understand the law yeah. of attraction. Bring him home. You know what I'm saying? But, um... BG was going through what he was going through, so bam, I was able to, it was an opportunity. Yeah. So I was already like the last hot boy, so I'm like, fuck that, I'm about to come out my shell, nigga, I'm about to start, bam. And bam, that's what happened, man, I started coming out my shell, so that's why I was, like, I was hogging the parts and shit, because I was, I had a plan, you feel me? But um, of course, my drug addiction overpowered that plan, and the plan went sour, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. Yeah, man, that's what wind up happening, bro. Like, I, I got a lot of parts that were supposed to be BG parts. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, um, shit, it was some 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 big parts. Killed the mailman, robbed the jewelry store. Hell yeah. You know like, you know, <laughs> no, I know they ain't saying no. Yeah, yeah, all that, all that, all that worked in my favor, man, you know? So, yeah. We shot that move for about 35, 45 days, something like that. Man, that's true. In the hood in Magnolia. It's a certified class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who's the baller now, Woody? <laughs> man, that nigga, that should get so high. <laughs> no, yeah, man, shout out to Curly Head. <laughs> yeah. Man, that young and thugging. That's yeah. one of them ones, man. If you know, you know. Yeah, 20th anniversary this month, this year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to drop a whole nother young and thugging. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Big thuggy. Big thuggy, yeah. yeah. Then my label, you know, my whole empire is YNT. That's young and thuggy, you know. Um, I'm branching out, man. You know, this is my, my book. Bro, we we'll see you in writing a, a, you're writing a book, man. man. Yeah, the book out. I got my movie, you know, I'm about to start casting you know out here. Auto you know I want my sign. I got to get me my sign. So on, the man. auto thugography of Turk, man, is, 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 is like a little... Give us a brief something, rundown, something, something, man. You know, I'm talking about a little, like how my shit is. Like I got my documentary, I got my book, I got my movie. What you don't get in the movie, you don't get in the documentary, you don't get in the documentary, you don't get in the movie, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, kind of like, bam, bam, bam. And I wrote all this when I was in prison, man, you know what I'm saying? Hi, I'm Carlos Miller, and I know that you want to hear about this offer right here that I have from BlueChew.com. 
because I'm going to give you the whole game. So basically, you go to the website, and then you consult with a licensed medical professional, and they'll tell you if you're approved or not to get some of this good blue chew. Then, a couple days, you'll have your blue chew. And we got a special deal for the listeners. If you go to bluechew.com right now, you can get some for free if you use the promo code 85 South. All you have to do is pay for the shipping. Is anybody listening to me? You can get Blue Chew delivered within days for free if you use the promo code 85 South and pay $5 in shipping. It's going to come in a discreet package. Nobody knows what it is except you because you ordered it. It's bluechew.com. And you want something for free. So use the promo code 85 South. No, I'm, I'm telling you how to get it for free. I don't have it to give to you, but I'm giving you the gift of giving how to get it for free. That's blue chew, blue like the color, chew. You know what chewing like, like you're chewing something. That's C-H-E-W. Don't be on there misspelling it. It's bluechew.com. Use promo code 85 South. It's going to pop up. You just pay the shipping. I worked it out with them, so you... That's why we got the blue lights. Hey, what's up? It's me, Clayton English. You ever forgot that one thing at the store? Now you can get snacks, drinks, and all your household essentials in 30 minutes with DoorDash. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. And now you can get the grocery essentials you need also with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more. Whenever you download the DoorDash app, just enter the code 85SOUTH2021. Don't forget, that's code 85SOUTH2021. That's 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Bro, I'm seeing pictures of the old hood, man. Tell us what it was like coming up in that... In Magnolia, that hard ass you know, Magnolia down in oh, New Orleans, man. Yeah. Like Katrina, in Katrina, man. Bro, like for real, for real. Um, in Katrina, That's... I was locked up, you know. Pre Katrina. Um, before Katrina, shit, you know, I was in that bitch. Like I say, I was in the hood. I was in the projects, dog. Like, like, like. Being a big rapper that I was, I still was in the hood. That's why I never seen that. I was a big rapper, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because in New Orleans, they don't treat you like a big rapper. They like, you like cousin. You my cousin, you my uncle, you my sister, you my brother, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We all right. family. So I never really felt it, dog. Like, I felt that shit when I was in prison, you know what I'm saying? I was still running through the project, hallways, going to school, hair room, cocaine. You know what I'm saying? My niggas in shootouts, and I'm picking them up, and you know what I'm saying? Just like... I grew up, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing different, bro. And I wish it would have been different. I wish I would have seen, like, Baby and Slim try to save me from the hood. But when they take me to Metairie, soon when they go to New York to go meet with Universal, I'm going back uptown. I ain't taking Wayne up there, you know what I'm saying? I think he rapped about it on oh, Man, I Miss My Dog, you know what I'm right. saying? So I still had the mentality they wanted to be in the hood and be around my niggas. You feel me? I never forgot where I came from, you know what I'm saying? But I, I see now what they was trying to do now that I'm old. You yeah, they yeah. were trying to get, they were trying to save me. Hell yeah. You feel me? And, and, and let me see the bigger picture now that I see it now. Cause my niggas, they still there. Yeah. I fuck with them. I love my niggas, but now I make decisions because my family and everything, my priorities come first now. And they were trying to get me to prioritize way back in the game, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't see it cause I was young and dumb. You know, but um. When you heard that, man, I miss my dogs. What was your immediate reaction to it? I felt like Wayne was really hurt, as far as on my part. If you really like listen to it, that nigga like really went in his feelings on my part. You know what I'm saying? And it seemed like I heard him the most, but I don't understand why I heard him the most. 
And and I I I love to have that conversation if I did, you feel me? It's like he expected more from me than BG and Julie because me and him were like this here. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the same thing that I did, he wound up doing. I ain't do nothing but left the label. And then he wind up doing the same thing. So far as like our communication, like like being like this here, I don't know where that fell off track. I heard he say that I dissed him or something. I probably did. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But we all dissed each other. You feel me? Like, in our feelings on some shit. You know, saying this, saying that. You know what I'm saying? But, man, I got love for Lil Wayne. I got love for Juvet, BG, Birdman, Fresh, and Slim. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it came a time in our situation where niggas didn't get what they were supposed to have. You feel me? Like, Nigga, I'ma have my, my plaque coming in. I'm, I'm just getting my plaques, you feel me? We wasn't tripping about that, but then as I thought about it, I'm like, damn, I got plenty of plaques out there and I don't have none hanging on the wall. You know what I'm saying? I, nigga, I just ordered my plaques, you feel me? So I'm like, at least a nigga should have got that, you feel me? Like if a nigga ain't get nothing, cause a nigga really did put in work, you feel right. me? Fuck all the personal shit and all this, we put in work. You know what I'm saying? And um, I put in work. I was there, you feel me, the whole time. I, nigga, you go through the album, nigga, they got Tab Verge, that's my name. Nigga, I wrote my own songs, I did my I did my part, you feel me? And sometimes at times I don't feel like I was given the proper, you know, respect, you know what I'm saying, as far as at the label, as contributing to, you know what I'm saying, what yeah. went on, you feel me? Like, you gotta get your credit, Yeah, man. I, I, a project chief. <clears throat> Juvenile, that, that was my song, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We just redid it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I contribute to the baller blocker, you know what I'm saying? I did the chorus, that was me, you feel me? Like, I contribute, so even though I was quiet at the time and I ain't talk much, nigga, I, nigga, I contribute just as much as y'all contribute. Why you blocking you us, baller yeah. blocking so, us? You know, and that's where some of those feelings came from, man. When I used to rent, when I first came home, Cause a nigga was in there feeling like, nigga, I'm a part of this shit just as much as y'all a part of this shit. You feel me? Yeah. But then I start realizing, like, you know what? People gonna take my shit the wrong way. I can't control the narrative, so let me stop really talking. Even though it's some real shit, let me just stop talking because niggas might take it the wrong way. I'd rather just sit down and let a nigga know what it is. You feel me? Yeah. Like, bam, bam, bam. Nigga, we gonna have one on one, on one you know what I'm saying? And that's what wind up happening, you know what I'm saying? Me and baby wind up selling our shit out of court. You know, people don't even know what went on. I ain't talk about it, you feel me? Man, Wayne, you know, like everybody, we good. We on mutual, you know. They there, they there, they there. I'm doing me, you feel me? But I really do want this hot boy reunion shit, dog. But I'm not banking on that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not basing my life around that. You know, I got my own situation, my own career, my movie, Reckless, my book. The all the third eye for Turk, my own. All That's what I was just about to me. ask you. I like, seen Soldier Slim in here, man. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Soldier Slim was a big, major part in my life. He the reason, one of the reasons why I wanted to rap. I looked up to Soldier Slim, Magnolia Slim. Y'all know him as Soldier Slim. You know, um, we never got a chance to work together, but at one time, me and him was on the same record label. A lot of people don't know. You know what I'm saying? Called Hype Enough Records. You feel me? And I remember us having a concert one time in the project. Man, you know, it's Slim perform. Bro, that's at, probably the first yeah. time I ever heard about you being on any other record label. Yeah, hype enough. We was hype enough. Nigga named Chill Will had the whole Uptown sign. Before with Birdman, Chill Will had everybody. He had everybody before Birdman. He had everybody Uptown signed to him. Um, 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 Magnolia Slim, Magnolia Shorty, me, Leon, the Young Guns, who the group I was in. The nigga had, what was the um, group you was in before the Hot Boys? It was called the Young Guns. We were the Young Guns, before Young Gunners in, in, okay. in Philly. I got to get a new face something to do. He yeah. going to find yeah. that. That's who we was. Yeah. But, but, you know, we was kind of like local, and we ain't never just put out no shit. It just was some hood shit. You know what I'm saying? We had, like, hood concerts and the project, bam, bam, bam. That's when I had got my feet wet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, Magnolia Slim was a big inspiration, man. Like, everybody uptown mimicked Magnolia Slim. That nigga was really living like that. He a real gangster. Give me you know your coldest saying? Magnolia Slim story. Magnolia Slim just gangster all the way around, man. You know what I'm saying? Like every time we went to the River Boy Hallelujah, man, like he gonna start some shit, man. He the one started this camouflage shit. Nigga thought Juvenile did it, but that was Magnolia Slim thing. The Reeboks, Magnolia Slim. The Jibos, 
Magnolia Slim. Everything Magnolia Slim. Like he started all that. He had to some pay close attention. Wow, face. Hold up, my nigga. I'm stringing up my shoelace on my black soldier Reebok. Then been through some shit with him. Got a fresh pair when it's time to bust a fit with him. And he just was going off. He was like, these soldiers are made for walking. And I'm going to walk on you. The, like he was rapping about the Reeboks and shit back in the days. You know what I'm saying? But he was a nation. You know what I'm saying? Then when he went to pee, of course, you know, it's like Cali or Magnolia. It's like politics in the streets. Magnolia Slim, man, it, it, it wasn't going to go right because he from the Cali, yo. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's another story where I let them explain, you know what I'm saying? But that's some street politics shit. So Slim became Soldier Slim, not Magnolia. Street politics shit. Magnolia and Cali, yo, they, they like, bam, bam, you know what I'm saying? Some real street shit going on, you know? And, um, but, you know, it was business when he, bam, bam, you know? <coughs> Ain't no slim dog. Our whole uptown wanted to be slim. Like he was like he was like our New Orleans Tupac. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what Magnolia Slim was. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to his son, um, Lil Soldier Slim. Yeah. He doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jack Joe be going off too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My nigga Six Shot, Six Shot, all these niggas, man. S B O G T, like. Will had all of us, bro, you know what I'm saying? Then Birdman came, you know, Bird had the bag, man. So it was a privilege, man, to get signed to Cash Money, man. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, for me to be able to make that happen, like I, like I said, I was a young nigga that had determination, man. Couldn't nothing stop me, you know what I'm saying? And <coughs> when I signed with them, it was like, you know, I told y'all, you feel me? I told y'all niggas, man, you know? Told y'all niggas. Yeah. Man, welcome back to the 85 South Show, man. Yeah. We in here today. And we're the Dirty South legend, man. Hip hop legend. Man, y'all made a big ass mark in the music game when y'all came in this bitch, man. Yeah, it really dude, changed dude. a whole lot of the landscape, man. Facts. Like, facts, facts. And made everybody listen to it, bro. What was that Rough Riders tour like, man? Oh, um, man, that Rough Rider tour was the shit, dog. Like, that was I your remember, first one? Yeah, that, nah, it wasn't our first, but our, our first biggest one was okay. another big label, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It only made sense. They needed the South, we needed up North. Right, right. So it was like a business move, and it, it was just perfect, you know? And um, we used that. to got to get in these baskets and shit to get to the helicopter. I remember the helicopter. Hell yeah, yeah. We get in the helicopter, throwing the money <clears> down, <throat> come out the helicopter, bam. Man, the fresh, you know, he was a freak. He had his big ass condom on the stage and be spraying the bitches and shit with the condom. You know what I'm saying? Like, big ass shit. They crazy. So we had all the props and shit. Hold that up, was man. Wait, 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 wait. No, Turk, Turk, wait. He had a big ass condom, a blow up condom on the stage. You know what I'm saying? pull the girls up on stage. But the yeah. way you said it, like, we was supposed to know. Y'all know Manny Fresh a freak. This he a freak ass <laughs> nigga. All that, I mean, just listen to him. We talking about his dick and talking about fucking. Like, that's all his rap. Big dick down the drawers, and that's all he said. You feel know? me? That's also that was his prop. He had the big dick with the water come out like it's nothing. In the big dick. That was his idea. You feel know? me? Hey, where my big dick? <laughs> yeah. Where my big hey, dick? Hey, I got water. my big dick prop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Make sure they got water. You know, I'm about to ski in the bitch. Come on, you know man. You know what I'm saying? So baby had the crystal bottle, hot boy. We had you know the helicopter and shit. So. It was just every. It was our life. Our stage set was our lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Coming out, Wayne coming out the ground. Me, Juve, and BG was coming in the helicopter. Cause Wayne used to come out with his shirt off and shit. He thought he was Iron Chest Charlie or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know, um, Baby and Fresh come out the Rolex. Rolex open up. You know, and it just was love. Fresh man. used to say some cold yeah, shit though. Love, that dog. nigga said <laughs> he turned around. <laughs> He said, man, he bought a private plane. Yeah. And turn around and so did. It's the Jew and Wayne, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Put the, hey, now, some of that shit, you know, man. nigga fabricate. You know, I know, I'm just yeah, saying, yeah, this some, some of this shit is some colorful honest, shit. Let me tell you but yeah, we love to hear it. A lot yeah. of this shit, though, like, 
nigga spoke a lot of that shit in existence. You feel me? But see, we was believing a lot of this yeah, shit too much. Yeah, y'all believing it. Because if it a nigga bought true. a private plane and put some thirty inch Lorenzos <laughs> on that thing, <laughs> then nigga, you not landing there. <laughs> you don't want that plane to take off. That motherfucker ain't going. That nowhere. bitch gonna be pretty on the yeah. ground. Yeah. You better yeah. not try to tuck them fucking yeah. thirty inch Lorenzos on that private plane. Hey, but you know he like like I say, man, nigga talked about that shit, but nigga start living that shit for real, bro. I know. Like words is life and death is in the power of the tongue. Why I never shoot videos in the graveyard talking about debt and that that shit is for real, dog. Yeah. The law of attraction is obedient. Whatever you want, good or bad, it's gonna manifest. You feel me? Hell so yeah. I, I kind of like knew that as a, at, a, at, a, at an early age. I don't know if y'all ever heard of this um, book called The Secret, man. You know what I'm saying? And they got a documentary called The Secret. Y'all owe me too for this. But anyway. Man, you watch this on, on Netflix, bro. It gonna open your mind up to who you really are as a person. You know what I'm saying? Like, the person is not who you are. You know what I'm saying? The person is the imagination of who you made yourself to be, you know? But we really, our true nature is awareness. When we become aware of things, we move a little different. Mm -hmm. Certain mm -hmm. things don't bother us no more. People talking, mm -hmm. man, what you talking about? That ain't me, you feel me? That's you, you feel me? So. That's what I'm on, bro. I'm on the law of attraction. That's the secret in the world, bro. Like, and a lot of the elites, they don't want us to know these things. You feel me? So they keep us divided. They keep showing differences. You got on white and black shoes. You got on yellow. And, you know what I'm saying? That's what they do. So keep us at eyes to see the big picture, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um, to be honest, like we all can be whatever we want to be, bro. We focus on it. You know what I'm saying? And I learned that when I was doing time, I had attempted murder on two police, uh, white police officers. And I had 22 years, man. And my <coughs> mindset was like, I read this book, uh, Free Red Ricky Ross, the real Rick Ross told me to read um, Think and Grow Rich as a Man Think It and um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think these books is strictly about money, but what I learned, the same method that apply to money apply to life. You feel right. me? So if you can manage your life, you can manage your money. So where the, where the word money at, I just put freedom, you feel me? And man, I start executing them and doing the things that this book say, man, and I wind up coming home, you know what I'm saying? So I've been on that type of type of time ever since, dog. and a lot of stuff been manifesting in my life, you know what I'm saying, as I've been growing up. You know, I forgave people that at first I was bitter towards, you feel me? I think a little different. I see things as who I really am. I'm a spiritual person. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, this flesh ain't nothing but experience, you feel me? We experience through this world, through this life, you know what I'm saying? But um, when you start thinking like that, man, you like you just be happy, bro. Like, nothing can make me mad, man. Like, nothing, you feel me? Like, nothing. Not saying that I don't go through the emotions, but I'm aware of the emotions, so I know how to say, you know what? I know this is emotion, so bam, 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 I'm going to deal with it accordingly, you know what I'm saying? So when you get to that level, it's like, okay, I didn't, I didn't arrive now. Now let me go ahead on and revisit. Okay, now I'm about to, I say I want to be a billionaire before this, this is what I'm going to be, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's all of attraction, you know? But um, everything that I went through, bro, I wouldn't change a fucking thing that I went through, you know? Nobody that I dealt with, you know what I'm saying, while I was going through it, you feel me? It just was an experience, man, that Hell, I this, had to go through. And this is on the book, right? Here. Yeah, the auto thug I can feel Turk, man. I Rolling talk about uncut. a lot of shit in there. You know, of course, I didn't put too much in there because, like I say, it's three parts. You know, I had to. I'm a businessman at the end of the day. Right. I can't rap forever. You know what I'm saying? But I can tell these stories forever. You know what I'm saying? The stories yeah. will never change. They're always going to be the same. Ain't no flaw in my character, even though a nigga might try to put it on there. But, you know, nigga, you, you can say what you want to say. You feel me? It, it facts over feelings. You yeah. feel me? So, you know, we live with hell, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just living my life, man. Married now. I got twins. I told a nigga Congratulations, my, my boy. Yeah. How you liking that? Yeah. 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 Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, man. I came home, I told nigga, man, I'm about to go home and make twins. But I came home, I made twins, bro. Come on, bro. Like, I know. spoke that shit in oh. existence, man. Like, the power of the tongue, bro. It's I'm finna go home and make some twins. You better watch that shit. I'm telling nah, you. Nah, I'm it. telling you. I believe <laughs> I'm it. I'm saying. Sure this shit is for real, bro. <laughs> like, like, see, what it is, the manifestation part come from 
what you focus on, that's what manifests in your life. So if you focus on it and you believe it with feelings, we we God, man. We we live God though. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get all spiritual with y'all. No, do but, your thing. You know what I'm saying? We live no, God. No, you don't always know. We, we, you we don't live know God, shit. bro. Talk. It's like we 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 are creators. You feel me? So when we say stuff with feeling and we believe it, dog, it actually manifests. Right. Whether it's good or bad, it manifests, dog. Like like. Niggas gotta be aware of that type of shit though. Like everything that's happening right now, nigga, this was manifested. This ain't just, you know, happening like this. You know what I'm saying? So just be ready for it when it happened, bro. You know, um, like I like I said, I wouldn't change nothing. It made me into the person that I am. You know what I'm saying? Um, before I had that shootout, I OD two times. Damn. In in, in less than 48 hours, and um. I got on my knees, bro. I prayed. I said, I don't, when I'm going to stop doing heroin and cocaine if it's life threatening. Three days later, the police kicked in my dope. And they shot 52 times, bro. Like, literally. The SWAT team, you know, they come in that bitch. They bang it. 223 MP40, 40s, 12 gauges. That's what they shoot. So, at my trial, I found out it was 52 inches in exit holes. I'm in the closet. I'm thinking I'm being robbed. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who it is. I'm protecting, you know, the house, man, my girl. So I see all black ski map. Boom, 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 boom. I start, so they start busting. We have a shootout. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Bam, after, the, after all that happened, I come out the closet. And I told my girl, I say, man, I'm shot. She say, you is? I say, I don't know. I'm asking because, nigga, I just know I'm shot, but I'm, I'm just... You know, adrenaline just rushing, you know what I'm saying? I'm knowing my face just got bullet holes in it. I'm knowing that. So she like, motherfuckers, the police start hiding. I'm like, oh, police here. So I'm thinking the police then came and got the robbers, you feel me? Them motherfuckers start cursing and all that. So I'm like, the, now it's starting to dawn on me. Damn, we had a shootout. Well, I didn't have a shootout with the police, you feel me? So bam, they made her come out, crawl, bam, bam, bam. Made me come out, they beat me like a motherfucker. I wish Tupac was here to see you. They said that shit, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, what the fuck? So in my mind, nigga, I had on my boxes, no shirt on, no nothing. I'm like, I ain't about to get in there for the police call. You know, I, I'm thinking they're going to kick it. I'm thinking all kind of crazy shit. They, gonna, they, they ain't going to take me to jail. They're going to try to kill me, you know what I'm saying? So I start acting like my neck was hurt, you feel? I'm like, oh, my neck fucked up. So they put me in an ambulance, you know what I'm saying? They, Brought me to the hospital. It's cold out there in Memphis, you hear me? So bam, I get in the hospital. Bruh, so many police officers came in there. Them motherfuckers look like the demons and devils just coming through that motherfucker. Looking at me, I'm handcuffed to the bed. They're like, you a blood, you a vice lord, you a crip. What that star mean? I'm, I don't know nothing about no gangs, you know, cause we don't got that in New Orleans. Well, they probably got it now, but we ain't had that. I'ma put you by the vice lord. I'ma put you by the crip. What the fuck is that? I don't know, you know what I'm saying? You shot my police officer. This before I know a police was shot, I ain't even know what was going on. So I'm like, man, I ain't, I ain't do shit. What y'all talking about? Man, them people so mad at me, bro. They put me on a 40 hour investigation. Let my girl and my homeboy go who was with me. And I was locked up, shit. Went to trial, I found guilty. And the feds took an alpha plea in the state. Bam, I wind up there eight, yeah, eight months, 16 days, you know what I'm saying? That's what it was, but I, I'm going to tell you how fucked up niggas is, though. And I don't like to even talk about this nigga, because nigga doing skits and shit about snitching shit. I ain't going to say who he is, but the nigga really like getting paid off of skits that's really real how he really was, you feel me? And the nigga really sunk the people on me. Told the people I had two kilos of heroin on an AK-47. You know what I'm saying? They need to hurry up. And that's what made them police come in my house. But the nigga is actually managing the nigga right now. And y'all, I'm not going to say who he is, but y'all all that laughed at this nigga jokes. Nigga snitched on me. I be so mad, bro. I be want to say something so bad, but I be like, you know what? This nigga joking about this shit, nigga. I done did all my, I done did. I didn't, I really did time about this shit, but how the world so fucked up right now, they like, if I come out and say some shit about this nigga, oh, he just hating. They wouldn't even believe, they don't, the world want to be deceived, but they don't want to be, they don't want you to tell them the real. So real niggas got to be quiet and don't say nothing like, 
I don't fuck can I right. control this narrative. Damn, I get a billion dollars, then I can speak on it. You feel me? I be holding it in, bro. I be watching this nigga. And you know who you is. You feel me? Yeah, you know who you is. But I, I, I won't get this because they, that nigga go viral and get a platinum record. Because they fucked up. These, they fucked up. They love fake deception. They love that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Real niggas can't win unless we stick together and start our own shit. You feel me? God damn, boy. Man. And that's just the half of it, dog. Like, you know. Where can they find this book at? My book, like, I went through a publicist, right? I mean, a, a, a publisher. And um, found out she was trying to be conniving. You know, like, like, I'm too old to be getting over on that. Let's partner up and let's do some shit. Any kind of snake shit, I'm out the gate checking it. You feel me? And that's what she did, trying to charge me extra for wholesale books or all that extra. It's a lot of shit. But I wind up taking it off her shit. Man, look, release me from this. She ain't want to give me the PDF files, right? So I'm like, damn. So me and my wife, my wife's smart as a motherfucker. She my charge partner, too. You know, bam. She figured out, nigga, we typed that bitch up. And I went through Lulu.com. Shout out to Pimp and Ken, man, because he been selling his book for the longest, independent. And making millions of dollars just doing that shit. You feel me? Independent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, nigga? I made 600000 selling them books, nigga, through the pandemic. I sold 20,000 books. You know what I'm saying? $30. I'm going to make a million off these bitches this year. You feel me? You damn sure. I'm going to sell yeah. 40000 these motherfuckers. I'm going to make $1.2 <clears throat> million dollars off these motherfuckers this year. You know what I'm saying? I made 600000 That's how I moved to Atlanta, bro. You feel me? In the pandemic, nigga. I moved in the pandemic. I ain't, my house brand new. From ground up, you know what I'm saying? I moved, I bought that motherfucker. Bro, you the second person to come in here with yeah. a brand new house. I'm out here buying <laughs> you. <laughs> mother. Nigga had the nerve to be living in my shit first, man. Hey, it's brand new, bro. So it, 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 it was like a, it was like yeah. a blessing, dog. Like, like, like it ain't no excuse for a nigga to be broke because social media have made it easy. Right. Like they got apps. Like I'm an agent. I got my own agency for this app called Up Live, right? Niggas making 40000 a month. Regular niggas. Only thing you got to do, go live. You go live and get money. You get paid. Y'all niggas on, 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 on live and y'all ain't getting paid for it. Now you get paid. Bego, up live, tag. I'm about like, to download all some this of that shit. shit. You get right paid now. for this shit to go live, right? This motherfucker's this niggas already making on that? Sick, niggas, bro, all the Braxons on the motherfucker. Um, Shekana, um, fucking, um... Everybody on that motherfucker. Y'all just ain't on. You ain't told me shit. <laughs> I yeah, just heard about it. Baby, Listen, man. I'm on there tonight. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Hey, man, I'm going to put y'all down on it, but it's all kind of ways to get money, dog. Like, 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 it ain't no excuse for a nigga to be broke unless they lazy. Right. Social media have made it to where you can become rich overnight. It's, it's the same niggas that I'm getting in contact with, you can get in contact with now. It's all about the power of negotiating. If you not a talk, you know what I'm saying? You can't demand nothing from no nigga. You feel me? You got to be able to talk to a nigga and get what you need. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, use social media to do it. You feel me? You can make a lot of money. Merch, books, shit, podcasting, hosting. Yeah, we right here all with that shit, 85 dude. Self Show. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Podcasting. Everything. Everything, get y'all money. Even if people don't know on IG now, they got it, you know, on YouTube where you can monetize your video. Yeah. IG Know all about it. You put your video on IG TV and they monetize on there. You don't need to have 10,000 followers or subscribers to monetize. Put your content on fucking Instagram and get your bag. They got the badges where your fans can support you. You feel me? I done made thousands of dollars on that motherfucker if you're eligible. You feel me? Like the money is out there. You Tell need them, to man. listen to people that's out there telling you this and don't think that everybody that giving you game is a scam, man. Like, cause I thought that. Nigga came to me, uh, <laughs> he a gangster and nigga like, man, look, you be on social media, nigga, you could be making money for this shit. Girl. Nigga, I ain't been on Instagram for free since, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for real. Nigga showed me the check. Yeah. Nigga just got me in my agency. That nigga made seventy-seven thousand dollars his first month. And I'm a celebrity. He a regular nigga. You feel me? Like that nigga know. ain't regular if he makes seventy-seven thousand dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a fuck what nobody yeah, says. Seventy-seven G's, bro. He ain't an ordinary no, nigga. Yeah. No. It's, 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 bro. 
Man, I love my Chinese people. I don't know what y'all got going on with that hate Asian shit, but them people breaking us off. I love y'all, man. man you. I don't know what they got going on, but them people paying us, man. Damn. I'm telling you, they paying us. That's the, Cause it's like a human Fortnite game. You know what I'm saying? I don't, you don't play Fortnite. Your kids probably do. But Call of Duty and all that shit is a human Call of Duty Fortnite game. You in that bitch and you playing. You just doing what you doing. People throwing gifts on you. They convert to real money. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Uh, Play the game, get in there. What y'all doing right now, I'd be getting money. If I was on live right now, I'd be getting money. Oh. Uh, we matter of fact, we get paid in, uh, at twelve o'clock. We are getting get money. Yeah, we get paid. We get paid on Beagle. You Shout know. <laughs> we getting money right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for real, bro. So, like, it ain't no excuse for people to get money every chance you get. Y'all can follow me. I got my own agency, YNT Agency, on Instagram. I'm plugging everybody. This shit better than a PPP loan, man. You know what I'm saying? This shit better than that. You ain't gonna go to jail for this, and it's tax free. Right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I'll let me, I'm gonna put you in. You feel me? I'm broke. Turk. Man, we appreciate you coming through the motherfucking trap, though, man. I appreciate y'all, bro. Yeah, bro. bro. Appreciate it, man. You, you got to sign this book, man. Man, you already know what man, it is, Man, I got the show up, y'all. Sign the table, too, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Table signed. Man, we're going to get yeah. the table signed. What is K-K what? K-A-R-L-O-U-S. Hell yeah, yeah man. man. You already know what it is. Y'all see what it is live and direct, nigga. Original motherfucking H. Bizzle, man. BG Free. Oh, hey, we don't say free BG because that's like we asking. Exactly. BG Free, oh, look, he, he already here, he man. A lot of y'all got it misconstrued and y'all had the wrong interpretation when I said that. Talking about, man, Turk won't clout. Nigga, I am clout. I don't chase clout. Come on, you man. You feel Come me? On. Y'all got to understand what clout is, man. Clout is a motherfucker that's trying to get on, nigga. I done been on, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, a lot of y'all won't be where I'm at, man, if y'all don't fucking listen. You feel me? BG free, nigga, and that's what it gonna be. Mm. Straight like that. If you don't understood, you don't understand, nigga. Straight like that. You feel me? Yeah. Bro, I was in the club the night Cash Money Records took over for the 99 in the 2000s, bro. You don't even yeah. fucking understand <laughs> yeah. what the fuck that shit that mean. Shit I bought happen. everything. Everything. Right. My nigga Chad in the back, like, his favorite hot boy song is Keisha. Dog on high. I wonder what's up with Keisha tonight. I'ma give her a call, see if it's all right for me to swim through. She say it's all gravy. First, I gotta find somebody to watch my baby. She said it's all good. I'll be there in a minute. She didn't know why when Wayne was already in it. <laughs> Shout out to Weezy, man. You already know what it is, nigga. My little bro for life, man. You know, yeah, anything that y'all probably heard, man. Listen, man, I love my brother. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is, man. It ain't no beef with us, man. Y'all stop trying to do that. Man, y'all had so many yeah. legendary moments and songs. Tuesdays and Thursdays is one of my all-time yeah, favorites, man. A whole lot of days of the week. And it still is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout out to Bankroll, man. That was my little bro, man. Like, Bank he had did that fucking ballin' like a hot boy, man. Yeah. We about to shoot the video for that motherfucker, bro. That song we're gonna put us right back. Yeah. For the hot boy shit, man. Shout out to Bank Street, the whole street. They let me do the official um, Bankroll, you know what I'm saying? Still my nigga song, man. Dedication to Bank, bro. I shot it on Smith street right by his grandma house man i appreciate that man whole yeah. street money you dig yeah. hell yeah turk don't let this be the last time you stop through this trap out man. here in the Come eight on, man. man hey yeah, man now. yeah you know exactly where we at man this is the 85 south show we out of here my nigga milk let me get a prison yeah, my guy shoot it up job, hell right. yeah roy shoot the photography Yeah. Hey, get my arm um, lying, bro. I need it. Oh, my shit, oh, my I heard it, bro.